Hey YouTube, welcome back. <clears throat> Today we'll talk about data partitioning. Uh, what is it and what are the key concepts of data partitions that you should know about in your system design interview? And we will talk about why do we need data partitioning. So what is data partitioning? Uh, data partitioning, also known as uh, data-based uh, uh, partitioning or sharding, is a database management technique that involves dividing a large database into smaller, more manageable pieces called partitions or shards. Each partition uh, contains a subset of the data and is typically stored on separate uh, separate servers or storage devices. And the primary purpose of data partitioning is to improve database performance, scalability, and maintainability. So let's talk about how it works and why, why do we need it. So let's say that we have this database. Okay. Let's call it DB. DB. And yeah, let's make it quite big. And this database, we have only one database that stores all of our data. And right now that our database is quite full, <coughs> so we'll add more resources to it. And um, and and uh, oh, great. Oh, it's a great, it's a great, and it's full again. So we add more resources. So we add more resources. So we add more resources. If I'm we will reach a point that we cannot add more resources. Add more resources like add memory, storage, RAM, etc. So <coughs> we will reach a point that we cannot add more resources anymore um, because of the uh, uh, of the physical nature of the system. So the solution to <coughs> a solution to this one is to use partitions. And before saying how partition will work, we we want to like to say that managing one database, one big database, it's quite it, it's not it's not easy. It's it's really tough. Maintenance all of that, it's really tough. And the other thing that we have a single point of failure. If the database was full, all of our data is gone. And also on top of that, we have um, a cost problem because high end because we are adding a lot of uh, resources so right now our database have um, high end resources so high end resources tend to cost more so this where partitions come into play so we said that the partition that we have this data and we manage it into more smaller manageable pieces as you can see right now to increase the to increase the performance and the scalability of the system so if we have more data we can add more partitions or more shards to to improve that so <clears throat> and by this way we make sure that our system is um, is, uh, is scalable because we can add more it's also the performance is better because managing a small partition is way more easier than managing a full big database <coughs> Also, the cost, uh, the cost was it will be increased, uh, decreased because we do not have to use a high-end uh, uh, machine anymore. We can just go good with smaller uh, machines because since we're using um, more manageable small data. And this is this is the 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 the, the idea of uh, of data partition. <coughs> right now, I want to talk about some key concepts that you should know in my opinion in order to um, talk about partition like freely <coughs> uh, lucky in in the system design concept we don't know we don't we don't have to know that much about partition we should know a high level like we should partitioning on high level how it works that's it so all the concept that i'm saying that just you should know on high level so the first thing that we have the partition criteria because um bec be, uh, the partitioning criteria criteria uh you've been asked this i guess a lot <clears throat> so what that means so that can be partitions based on various uh, uh, c uh criteria such as um, ranges of value, like dividing customers' data by geographic regions, 
or maybe hashing algorithms like distributing data based on the hash value or other business specific attributes this is a thing that because you might be asked in your system design interview okay what is we are partitioning this data what are the criteria that we are partitioning in based on are we partitioning like based on user id are we partitioning based on <coughs> based on the country city etc uh, the number two is that the uh, partition independence because this um, this is this is a big one to talk about so um each partition operates independently so let's look at this one each partition here will operate um thank you each partition here of these ones will will um uh, will operate independently meaning that queries and transactions involving one partition do not affect the others turn uh, the uh, the the others Doesn't that, like if i edit something here it will not affect all the other uh, partitions if i read something it will not affect all the other partitions if this one failed this will not affect the other partitions so we have the partition independently uh, other thing that it's to talk about, uh, I did talk about before, but it's it's worth mentioning again, which is scalability. Scalability. So data partitioning enables horizontal scalability, as you can see right now here. As the data volumes grows, additional partitions can be added to um, accommodate the increased load, allowing the database to scale out. So as I said before, we can add more partitions if we want uh, to add to, to to scale um other thing that it's great about h is the oh no which is the performance so smaller because it's a smaller one here so smaller data partitions can lead to faster query and retrieval times because database systems can focus on subset of data and not all the data so first we have a smaller data set we not we like if we if we want to like read something from this uh, partition we only have to read what in this one we don't have to read all of the all of the all of the other uh, 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 all of the other partitions but if we are in a big database we will have to read our data across all these big databases so the performance is it's really improved lastly we have the fault tolerance let's look here <coughs> So, data partitioning can enhance fault tolerance by replicating data across multiple partitions or locations. In case of server partition failure, the system continue operates. So, we will do this one. Let's say that this system, this one partition is um, is, is down. But we want to make sure that if, if user want to read this data right now, the user can't because this, this partition is down. So, we could replicate our data across multiple partitions to make sure that they will be available most of the time so and this one video that i will talk about is how data replication and data partitioning work together to uh, to 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 improve the uh, the performance and the scalability and availability and the fault tolerance of the system okay so let's talk about um okay so let's talk about why do we need partitioning we did talk about the uh, uh, the the criteria. We talk about some key aspects and why you need the partition. I think it's quite um, uh, often uh, it's it's quite obvious to say uh, um, to say why do we need it. But let's just go through it together. The first thing that we talked about is oh sorry is the performance. The performance is improved as you can see and and i'm saying over and over and over and i know maybe you are quite sick of saying of saying it that much but again it's the performance because right now we don't have to manage big database we have a smaller database so one of the primary reasons actually it's to improve the performance like um for data partitions um one of the primary reasons for data partitions partitioning is to enhance database performance uh, smaller partitions means that the database system can work with reduced data set resulting in faster query response times and reduced resource uh, uh, uh contention the second thing 
that was also quite obvious and we did talk about it two times already and I'm talking about it the third time which is the scalability so data partitioning supports horizontal scaling as I said before of the database as data volume and traffic increases additionally partitions can be added distributing workloads uh, and ac uh, accommodating more users and transactions so as i said before we can add more machines and more partitions to serve all our needs so it's easier to uh, to, to to scale also it's uh, the manageability so a large monolithic let's talk about this one so large monolithic uh, databases can be challenging to manage and maintain. However, data partitions in the other side, data partitions on the other side, simplifies database administration by allowing uh, the DBE, uh, the DBA, uh, is to focus on individual part partitions, making up the uh, backups, indexing, and maintenance tasks more manageable and more easier. Also, we need it in in data isolation. So, as I said before, let's look at here again. I, and as I said before times, uh, so data partition before provides a level of isolation between partitions. If one of the partition experienced an issue, so let's say this one was failed or something like that, if one of the partitions uh, experienced um, um, issues or uh, requires maintenance, uh, it does not impact the availability the availability of other partitions, ensuring that other parts of the system just remain uh, operational. Um, also, it's great in load balancing because data partitioning fa uh, facilitates uh, load balancing across multiple servers, or uh, or storage devices requests and uh, queries can be distributed evenly among partitions, uh, preventing any single partition from becoming a performance bottleneck. And also, it's a great when it comes to high availability. Like data partitions can be combined with uh, data uh, with uh, with the data replications uh, to ensure high availability. Uh, each partition can have replicas uh, stored on different servers or locations, reducing the risk of data loss due to uh, hardware failures or disasters. So um, that's it. That's it, basically. So in summary, data partition partitioning is a valuable techniques in database management that enhance performance, scalability, and manageability. It's particularly benef uh, beneficial for large-scale applications and databases that need to uh, accommodate growing data volumes, provide high availability, and distribute data to meet specific business needs or regularity requirements. So that's it for today's video, and I hope you like my content. If you like my content, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll never miss a video, and see you guys in future problem.